this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the feed regulator uh, system on this uh, Genie uh, Singer Model 353. And again, I want to thank Rita M., a faithful viewer of my channel, who brought up a very good point and question about this Genie. And that was that she felt, and I agree, that the reverse button on this model seems uh, stiff, you know, to, to uh, get it to work. Now, I don't have any rubber feet on the machine right now, you know, so that's part of it. But um, I told her that I would investigate because I was curious. So that's what this video is about. Now, be before I take a closer look at Genie uh, feed system, I want to just talk about the feed system in general, okay? So these are parts from a Rocketeer. Um, so that just I, I just want to show you a little bit how the feed system works. This is the main horizontal arm shaft. So the hand wheel would, would go on this end and the take up lever and needle bar system would be connected into here. Okay. And this piece is called the forked feed connection and it runs from the horizontal arm down to some shafts in the bottom that uh, make the feed dog move okay and this is the feed regulator this part right here and this is the, uh, the bolt that bolts through the machine at the below the hand wheel to hold the regulator. And then this is the, you know, people call it the stitch length control. And uh, this is the, the little lever that you use to, to move from uh, long stitches up to short stitches and so forth. So the way this, oh, there's one more part here I want to show you. This elliptical, take, take a look at it. Let's see if I can get it kind of on here. You see where the shaft is going through? It doesn't go through in the center. See how, see how there's just a little space here between the shaft hole and the end? But on the opposite side, look, there's like a, about a half inch. So you see that it, it's not uh, centered in there, it's eccentric. So when, when the arm shaft moves, it's kind of lopsided, okay? And the, the forked feed connection goes and sits just like that. So when, when the arm shaft is rotating, that uh, oh I've got this I've got a screw out of here this elliptical is what makes the um, forked feed connection kind of lift and lower and and rock back and forth now on on the forked feed connection is a slide block that the regulator go, goes on okay and that's that's how the regulator can control, it's, it's controlling how far this fork feed connection moves, so how far the feed dog moves. And it, the, the feed regulator has an opening and it slides on that slide block. I should put a little bit of oil on here maybe to, to get it better, but it kind of sits like that. Let me see if I can. It sits. It sits like this. This would be going through the end of the machine, right, right there, with the hand wheel on the end. And as you move this lever up and down, that's what controls the length of your stitch by controlling how far the feed dog pulls. 
and if you see up here the fork on that elliptical when you when you whoops <laughs> it slid off uh, when, when you move this you see how it changes how how far up the fork comes and also the angle of the fork okay so that's the feed regulator and it controls the length of the stitch by controlling how far the feed dog moves the fabric between needle um, strokes okay so um, almost almost every vintage singer on my channel has a feed system like this and the genie has a feed system very similar except uh, instead of having this lever like like on the rocketeer that you you move up and down here it has this lever this curved plastic lever but it's pretty much the same principle when, when you're moving this lever there is a feed regulator inside and, and look there's a screw right there below the hand wheel that screws it in place okay and when you when you move this uh, plastic lever up and down it's doing the same thing as this metal lever it has the same feed regulator like this that goes on a slide block of a fork feed connection there's a fork feed connection piece of metal in here just the same and up at the top of the genie fork feed connection it connects to an eccentric just like this Look, it's it's just the same kind of system except this is plastic and except for the reverse now on the old style you know you the when you went down it was the longest stitch the machine could do like six per inch 12 per inch 20 per inch when you went all the way up with this lever it raised that forked feed connection and changed the angle and that made the, the feed dog move in reverse this does not work that way this has a push button reverse and when you re, when you push it in it's moving the feed regulator and it moves the fork feed connection up and changes the angle to change the feed dog and the lever here on the forked feed connection or on the on, on the feed regulator in the genie there's a rivet right about here uh, let me get let me there's my pointer there's a little rivet that sticks out right about here am I looking at this right yeah it's right about up up here and this push button lever goes in and it's got a rocker on the bottom so it kind of rocks and it's got a little hook that goes over this rivet on the regulator so when you push that hook is moving the regulator around and then there's a spring on it so that when you let go it pushes the lever back for normal sewing okay and one thing I had always noticed was if you if you're down here towards the bottom the longer stitch you have to push this you have to push this button a long way you got to push it way down there to get reverse if you come up into your middle stitches like say 15 you don't have to push that lever nearly as far 
and if you get up into very fine like 25 stitches well you just you, you just barely push it like an eighth of an inch to get reverse and that is because when you're moving the lever that feed regulator is sliding forward and back on that block so when you're down in the long stitches it's moving the regulator this way so to push it all the way back to get reverse it's got a long way to go when you're in the middle the regulators about halfway onto that slide block so if you just push it about a you know quarter of an inch or so it's enough to move into reverse um, angle if you're up fine the feed regulators pushed way to the back which is very close to the angle of reverse so you just have to barely nudge it an eighth of an inch to, to get it to move the last bit on this eccentric to um, get into the reverse position so that's the that's the difference that's why it's got like a push button I don't know why they couldn't have just made this lever go up all the way in reverse because everything else when I look in there it's just like it's just like this with a slide block and a regulator and a forked feed connection and etc so I don't, I don't know but on the back side here um, I want to show you this uh, screw so let me readjust the camera so I can sit down here in front of the machine and show you these other parts okay I'm trying a different uh, autofocus thing on my camera here I'm hoping that you can see here I'm on the back side now of the, the machine and right there is the slide block and the regulator is on it and this uh, silver part down here this little silver shelf is is like the slide area for the slide block and this rounded off piece is the bottom of the feed regulator and there's the screw that screws in the feed regulator to hold it right and this this uh, silver here is the forked feed connection okay and this plastic circle is how the um, stitch length lever is mounted onto the it's it that plastic circle goes around the bushing that holds the feed regulator into the body of the machine and what's different here is I'll try and take a picture of it but it's it's very hard to see Maybe if I put the light up here right there is that hook from the reverse lever hooked over the rivet on the side of the feet block So there's the feed block, right? The feed regulator, the stitch length lever, and the forked feed connection. Let me see if I turn this now. You can see that fork. Let me. You can see that fork feed connection go up and down with the stroke. The slide block is sliding in and out of the regulator, but you know what's different here 
is this spring right here. There's a spring on the end of the feed regulator. There's a little arm that comes out with a hole. And there's, there's this spring attached right on it. Right here. And it goes up to a cross, up to a, a cross member up here. This bracket has an arm out and that's where the spring attaches. Um, up up through here. Let's see if I can come down from the top of the string spring down to the bottom of the spring. The hollow space in there. And that that spring is what makes the return lever or the reverse lever return back, pop back out. That spring is pulling up on the feed regulator and it forces that there that's in reverse and that's letting go you may notice here the when I put it in reverse the the fork feet connection changes position it goes up and a little more to the back and by the same token look at the feed dog here when I push the when I push on the uh, when I push on the reverse button let me just get that there watch that feed dog See how it moves to the back too when I put it in reverse? So the fork feed connection movement and this feed dog movement is all very normal when the machine goes into reverse. The Rocketeer parts I showed you, they, they all do the same thing on, on the other machines. It's just this has a a push button to do it. Now, Rita, you've been real patient to wait. I'm almost done with this series, but I wanted to wait until I cleaned and degreased the whole machine to see if if part of this hard to push was just a dirty, gunked up, you know, with the slide block and, and the pivots and the, the fork feed connection and everything like that. So uh, yesterday I, I uh, degreased this, you know, I treated it on the bench and cleaned it, gave it a shower in the bathtub and dried it and I put fresh uh, oil on everything and I will say that it made it easier to push. Now it's still very firm to me. Now if I had rubber feet on here I think I could push it without the machine moving back but it still takes a, a pretty firm push like I want to hold on to something with my fingers to push it. One advantage of this style is that when you put it up in reverse it just stays there until you take it out. So you can put it in reverse and you could you could sew a whole quilt in reverse if you wanted to but when you're done with reverse you have to move it back down but it's nice you can put it in reverse use both hands you know on your project and then go back and put it down out of reverse this to sew in reverse you have to hold it in reverse there's not like a little catch or anything you have to push push it in reverse and hold it and kind of sew with one hand on your, on your fabric or material or whatever you're doing over here and um, you know as soon as you let that go that spring snaps it back into forward sewing now if you're just finishing a seam you know if you're just you're coming to the end of your you're coming to the end of your 
seam, you know, and you reach up and put it in reverse for three or four stitches and let go, it's no big deal. But if you if you're sewing any length in reverse, which some some people are going to say, what 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 the heck are you sewing in reverse? But um, I see my wife do it and crafters do it where they can they can sew a whole seam in reverse, or they they want to uh, go around a corner and come back, or forward into a corner and come back, and it and it helps when they can have both hands doing stuff and they tell me that you know my wife said I, I would never want this to to do a major sewing because I'd have to hold this in but um, I think many modern machines are this way I, I don't know I don't work on too many modern machines but when I see them in the stores and stuff I think most of them have some kind of push button or, or button down here or something that you have to hold it to keep it in reverse. So anyway, uh, Rita, when, when I cleaned it, it was like, oh, this, this is kind of working easier now. I, I noticed that it's a little easier to move. Still very firm. So I'm figuring is something binding um, in here. You know, I got it all clean and oiled, so it's not that, but is something out of adjustment? I don't think so, because when I when I look up above and down below at this forked feed, by the way, let me show you where that that forked feed <coughs> comes comes down here. It's right here. Here's that here's that remember that shaft coming down? So here, here it is, and here's the uh, there's the rocker goes over, goes to the feed bar where the feed dog is screwed in right up above here. Okay, so you see that just so you know where the other end of that is. So, um, that made me think, what I'm getting at is, that made me think that this, the stiffness, the hardness, is because of the spring. So, I said, okay, well, if I, if I take the spring off, then I'll know. Right? So, let me... Uh, you go in here and I'll take the spring off. Uh, you know how I am, so don't get too don't get too close to your screen. This, <laughs> this spring will probably come flying off of here the way I do it. And I try the hook side of this thing. I usually have better luck with you know, maybe if I put it in reverse, push the reverse button, where is it here? There. It's going to put a lot of tension on that spring, though. Yee! Yeah. Get it off of this way. Oh, whew. Okay. So I'm just going to let that screw dangle up here now. It's just hanging from the other end. Because I want to go in here now and push that lever. Oh, I got to pull it back. It's already pushed. That's right. I was pushing it when I took the, the screw off. So when I push that lever, the, the, feed, the feed regulator just slides right on that block. Let me turn it around to the front here. Okay. Like I have to, I have to I have to pull it back out because it's not being pulled out by the spring. But man, it goes in just like butter. Look at that. Uh, if I blew, if I blew hard enough breath, it would probably make it go in. 
So there's nothing, that's my point here, is there's nothing in the mechanics of this that makes this hard to push. So for me, it's hard to push because of the pressure of this spring that, that's going to be pulling it back. Let me get my light around here. A bit. So, a good uh, a cleaning and an oiling, you know, if you took off the nose cover on the machine and you took off this back cover and you just got in here and cleaned around with some alcohol and a brush or whatever and got some fresh oil on there that would definitely be an advantage to you know how the whole thing is to get oil on the slide and oil right there where the screw comes through the bearing into the feed regulator but uh, other than cleaning it the only other thing to reduce this pressure would be to replace this spring. And I, I don't have a device that can tell me the, the pull required. Like, I don't even know how they measure it. Maybe it's pounds per inch. You know, it's like, oh, it takes five pounds of pressure to, to move this spring. Or three pounds or ten pounds. I don't know. But um, you, could, you could take the spring off. You disconnect it here. I'll, I'll show you up on top. Well, let me just see if I can do that right now. See if I can move this. No, oh, not that lever. Move this lever. Okay. So on this bracket right here, there's two little arms that come off. One arm goes down to the feed reverse lever. The other arm just comes out about three-fourths of an inch and that screw, or screw, <laughs> the spring is connected to it right here. Right there. It's hooked in there. So you could unhook, you know, both ends of the, of the spring and you could take it to the hardware store and tell them what's, tell them what's going on. So you, you, you're looking for a, a spring of this length that has like less pounds of pull. Now... I can't guarantee this will work because to me the singer engineers were pretty smart fellas or ladies and you know if they put a spring this on this strong on there you think it's because it's required to pull that feed regulator back up into forward position but that's why it's so strong they want it to go right back up there but you never know either because it was it was like 1979 and maybe they maybe the engineer or the designer called for a five pound spring but somebody said hey you know what we got three hundred thousand ten pound springs left over from this other model let's just use those <laughs> I don't know you know but if you could find a spring of the same length that required less uh, pressure on it then the reverse lever should be easier to push and you can if you can see this uh, space up there there's there's quite a bit of room here I mean this this screw is uh, I don't know an eighth or eighth of an inch or three sixteenths maybe diameter you know you could you could put a, a screw a spring I keep calling it a screw you could put a spring that was bigger around and have plenty of room see so it, it would be okay if it was like fatter or bigger around as long as it was the same length 
and if it had less less pull you know you could try it i don't think a, what would a spring like that cost i don't i i don't buy a lot of springs i'm you know to me it's like a couple dollars or something but maybe springs are a lot more expensive nowadays i, I don't know but um if you like the machine and you did enough reversing you know, like, uh, I remember my mom and aunties and grandma sewing, man, they faithfully reversed at the, at the end of every single seam. Man, I mean, they were very, they were like religious about it almost, you know. So, uh, you know, if you did enough and this is bothersome enough, you could pull this spring out and take it to a hardware store and tell them the deal. I think that people at the hardware store could uh, use a meter and test the tension or strength of the pull, whatever they call it, on that uh, spring and maybe find one that had less. And when I say the same length, I guess it could be a little bit uh, shorter because it could stretch, <laughs> right? You know, but... Uh, that's about the only way I see to to make it a little easier to push. Um, so there we go. Anyway, that's uh, about the feed system and the reverse lever on a Singer model 353 and 354. Thanks for tuning in and thanks again Rita for asking a great uh, question and bringing up a, a great point of the genie. Come back and see me. Take care now.